It's beautiful to see here how the humility of Esther as she gets ready to come before the king. Esther has gotten the news from her cousin Mordecai that Haman has made a plan and he's going to give this extraordinary amount of money into the king's treasury so that he can have a day where all of the Jews in the entire kingdom are to be annihilated. And, and it's been signed and sealed. And it's a terrifying prospect. And Mordecai's in sackcloth and ashes. He comes to Esther. Esther says, well, nobody can go before the king unsummoned and I haven't been summoned for 30 days. And Mordecai, Mordecai said, well, if, who knows, but you've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. And she says, well, if I perish, I perish. But she says, everybody, I want you to pray and fast with me. And they pray and they fast for three days. Now, Esther was the queen. She could have just got really offended and gone, what? And just got all indignant and marched up there into the court and, and just said, I am unhappy about this situation. Do you know what you've done by, by signing that decree? Do you know? And she, she could have just blown a stack, right? Sometimes people do that. It, it's conceivable that, that that could be a an emotion. But praise the Lord, God hasn't asked us to be people who are moved by our anger or are moved by our sense of injustice or are moved by any form of emotion other than the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's heart for us is to recognize that our help isn't going to come from our efforts. God's not asked us to defend ourselves, but to follow the example of Jesus, who he didn't even open his mouth when they were accusing him. Didn't, didn't bother trying to defend himself, but knew that God had a plan. And, and God's looking for us to look to him. Where does my help come from? I, I, look, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And instead of marching in all indignant and thinking, well, I've got my position. Who does he think he is? I'm going to do something about it. She realizes that her help's not going to come from her position. It's not going to come from her favor. It's not going to come from her, her beauty or her gifts. It's going to come from the Lord. And so she goes to the Lord. She goes to the highest authority, King of kings and Lord of lords, knowing that the King of kings has the ability to, to turn the heart of kings. Hallelujah. So Esther's fasting and praying for three days before she humbly comes before the king. Haman, he's so full of himself. He is just full of pride. And he's like, yeah, I'm boasting about this and I'm boasting about this and I've got all the favor. I'm like, oh, so I'm just going to go in there tomorrow and I'm just going to ask the king if I can just hang that wretched Mordecai on my gallows and then I'll go off again and be the center of attention again. Isn't this wonderful? But in the middle of the night, the king can't sleep. And so he calls for some boring records of his kingdom to be read to him, hoping that I suppose that it would help him fall asleep. And they happen to read this chronicle about how Mordecai had thwarted a plan to have the king assassinated. And the king says, wait a minute, what was done for that guy? That, he saved my life. What was done for him? And they said, well, nothing, sire. He says, this isn't good enough. It's morning by this time. And he says, hey, is someone out there in the courts? And here comes Haman bright and early. And, and the, the king says, oh, Haman, come in. Haman goes, of course. <laughs> I can come any time I like because I'm the most special in the kingdom. Walks in, ready to tell the king what he's going to do. And the king says, what should be done? for the man that the king delights to honor. And Mordecai says in his heart, who would he want to honor more than me? Because when you're full of pride, you can't see anything outside of yourself. 
It's all about me. What about me? It's just like me, 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 me. Ha ha, look how great I am. But we just read in Proverbs, pride comes before destruction. So Mordecai, uh, Haman goes to the nth degree of all the things he could think of to honour. Like dress him in your own clothes, put him on your horse, make your most, most important noble walk them around the city proclaiming that this is what the king delights to do to the man that he delights to honour. And the king says to Haman, wonderful, go and do it for my servant Mordecai. It's so wonderful. It's just such a fabulous story. <laughs> and, then, um, and then he turns up again that night at the banquet, passion-based, <laughs> so humiliated, angry, but here I am. And finally, after the dinner, we know the story that the, the king says, Esther, sweet Esther, tell me what I can do for you. She said, please spare my life. This man, Haman, is trying to take my life and the life of all my people. The king gets so, so mad that he just steps out into the, the garden for a few minutes to try and calm down because he's so angry. Haman falls on Queen Esther's couch begging for mercy. The king comes back in and sees Haman falling on top of the, the queen and goes, would you even assault her in my, in my very presence? And one of the eunuchs pipes up and says, you know, he's just had a gallows made for Mordecai, the guy, you know, that saved your life. And the king goes, wonderful, hang him on it. And then we know the story that the, the glorious redemption that was brought about. I think it's such an amazing story.